Oh hey guys, I'm going to show you a little trick that I figured out about how to create a sprite sheet. Sprite sheets are super useful in programs like the Unreal Engine or Unity or any other 3D game engine. If your final product is not in Flash, you're going to probably want to export it out to a sprite sheet, assuming it's a game that you're working on. If it's a TV show or a movie, then this tutorial is actually not going to be very useful for you. So there's two ways that I can create a symbol. The first is if I've got a piece of artwork. I'll just randomly create this shape here. And then I select it. I can hit F8 on the keyboard. And I get a few options here. I get the registration point, which is the center point that it'll rotate around, basically. I get the type, which you'll only ever use movie clips or graphics. Movie clips are really useful if you're doing games inside of Flash. They're also useful if you want to do blurs and glows inside of Flash. But I recommend if at any point your workflow involves Photoshop, you have better control over your glows and your blurs in Photoshop. So probably graphic is uh, the most commonly used one that I go for. So you can name it whatever you want. I'll name this guy Blob. And I'll say OK. So you'll notice now that in the library we've got blob and it gives you a little preview of what it looks like here. If you don't have the library window it's easy to get under window and then library. So I've got my symbol here. Now I know that I'm out on the stage because it says up here scene one, which if I go to the scenes window I can see all the different scenes that I have. So I'm on scene one but if I double click on this it takes me into into the blob graphic symbol. So I'm down inside of the blob and you'll notice that my timeline is different. I no longer have those animated frames or any of that. So that's one way to create a symbol. To get out of it you just double click anywhere on the stage or you can click up here on the scene button. Go in, come out. I can also edit inside of the symbol by double clicking on the icon down here in my library. This opens up an isolated view of it because it's saved in the library as a symbol. Basically, what I mean is this guy can be duplicated if I drag him out of the library. And if I edit him one time, it edits all of the instances of the same symbol and the symbol in the library. Remember that you have to make these edits inside of the symbol in order for this to work. Now. That's the basics of graphics. You're probably wondering what that has to do with flipbooks. Well, I'm about to show you. First, change the size of your stage to the standard texture size, or one standard texture size, always used in video games, 512 by 512. And then I'm going to save as because I've already made significant changes. Okay. So. I've just saved my file, I've just changed the stage size. Now my goal is to get all of these frames inside of one symbol. And to do that, I'm going to first highlight all these frames by clicking and dragging, then right clicking on the blue section of frames, and I'm going to say copy frames, left click. Then I can create a new symbol down here, there's this little create new button at the bottom of my library panel. I want it to be a, a graphic symbol. I will call it frame. Say OK. Come right here, right click, and paste frames. Now, I want this to be pretty much centered on this registration point. First step is to create a box. R for rectangle tool. If you hold shift, it will scale evenly. Um, v for select, delete the square. Oh, <laughs> my line was white. If I double click on that line, I can change it to a more useful color. Then I want to align that box. Align to stage, center, and center. And it'll center it around that registration point in the middle there. Okay, still with me? Cool. Lock the box layer. I'm going to call this bounding box. Rename that layer. Now I want to select that flame and I want to move it over. 
But if I just move that over, then it leaves the rest of it over there. And that's a pain because I don't want to move them one at a time. So I can do edit multiple frames, drag this over everything, hit control A, and I can now use the selection tool to move it. And if I type Q on my keyboard, I can even rescale it. Hold shift and alt, it'll scale it from the middle. So I can get that fitting nice in there in, in my texture size. Okay, deselect that guy. And then I can go back out to scene one. And remember, I created a new symbol over here, but I don't have an instance of it on the stage yet. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my flames over here and create a new layer. And then I'm going to grab my flame symbol and put it out on the stage. Now that's weird. If I go inside of it, it seems to be the wrong size. Hang on a sec. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. So it's not 512 by 512, it's 622. Now it's 512 by 512. A line and a line. There we go. Uh, make sure that this all still fits in the box. Uh, yeah, fits pretty good. All right. Now I go back out to the stage by double clicking. I can, with my symbol selected, I can align my symbol to the center and the center. So horizontal center and vertical center. Now I want to get rid of, uh, not yet. I'm going to leave the uh, box for now because I need it for the next step. So this is great. So now I've got my symbol right here and it's animating, but all of the frames you can see are not tracked out here. Rather, I have to go inside of the symbol to see the frames there. Cool. Next step, I don't know, delete, delete any unnecessary layers. I did this log a while back. I don't really want that anymore. Uh, there's the rough version of the flame. I don't want that anymore. Um, I don't need these anymore either. Okay. All right, so I can save my file again. The next step is to create another layer. Copy this guy and paste him on this layer. Hide your other layer. Okay. This is where it starts to get really crazy. So I take this symbol and I'm going to do the transform tab. Make sure your constraints are on so it transforms evenly. I'm going to switch it down to 30%. And then I'm going to align it to my stage left and top. Now it's important that you have snapping turned on, which is this dude right here. If you hold control, or in later versions of Flash, I think it's holding Alt, and then you click and drag, it creates a duplicate. Another option is, of course, highlighting it, Control C, and then Control V to paste. So I've got these three. I can select all of them, copy and paste. And then when I move it, the corners will kind of snap together. My goal is to get all the boxes to snap perfectly together. Now, because I don't like math, I figured out a way to do this next step to get these to fit perfectly on my stage. Select all of them. Do Control G, as in group, on your keyboard. It'll group them all together. Now, under Properties, not under Transform. Transform will just say 100. But under Properties, you type in 512. And it scales them perfectly to the size of your stage. Then, to break them apart, you do Control b as in break, and you've got all your symbols perfectly scaled to the stage. Final step. This guy, if you look over here in Properties, under Looping, is set to Loop 1. I want to select all of these, change Loop to Single Frame. So now all of them are on Single Frame, Frame 1, and then you want to go through and change the first frame, frame two for this guy, frame three for this guy, frame four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Ah, nine. There you go. 
Finally, to get rid of the outline, you can double click into any one of them because they're all, remember, copies of the same instance. Right click on the bounding box layer and turn that into a guide layer. So now you can only see the bounding box when you're inside of the symbol, but when you go outside of the symbol, it's gone, it doesn't render. So this is really powerful because what I can do is I can hide either layer. I can hide the flipbook layer or I can hide the animation layer. And then my animation is playing here. A common mistake that people run into when using this is they try to make changes to the, to the animation in scene one out on the stage. The key to this is you have to double click and make all your changes inside of the symbol. I can't emphasize that enough. People make that mistake all the time. As long as you're making your changes inside of this symbol, and then go back out to the stage, your changes will update on this flipbook. So yeah, there's a really powerful tool that I like to use. From here, I like to go Edit Keyboard Shortcuts and File Export. Export Image is Control E. Is that always Control E? I think it is. Export Movie, I don't like to have as Control Shift S. Oh, <laughs> no, I remember now. It's not Control E. I had that set up custom. So, if you would set this one to Control E, which is something else, it's okay, you can change it. And then export movie to Control M. Because I use these all the time. It's like Control S in a way. Um, there we go, take that out. And then Control, Control M. Ah, it's not working. Well, rip. At least export image works. If you can get export movie to set to control M, more power to you. All right, so I can now do control E, export my image into here. I can call it whatever I want. I can choose the type of image. I like to do uh, .pngs because then I can get an alpha layer. You can get this thing into Photoshop. You can add some blur, you can add some glow, whatever you want. Uh, it's a really powerful tool. So. Yeah, that's how you set up a sprite sheet exporter in Flash. You can do it for 4x4s, you can do it for 5x5s, you can do it for a 4x2 if you're feeling really crazy using these same things. In future tutorials, I'm probably going to do most of my stuff in flipbook friendly formats because I make video games and it's nice to have these laid out like this. So, anyway, hope you learned something.